is the fourth planet out from the sun, and it is one that has captivated people around the world for ages. It is a mysterious place, an evocative place. Mars is about a third the size of Earth, and it is geologically dead, meaning the inner core is solid and it does not have any active volcanoes. It does have the largest dormant volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. Try to see it on the surface if you can. It's in the northern hemisphere. Mars also has a thin atmosphere, and evidence is slowly piling up that it had running water on its surface at some point in the distant past. It also has two tiny moons in orbit around it, Phobos and Deimos. We've landed many spacecraft on Mars, starting with the highly successful Viking program in the 1970s. Most recently, the rovers Opportunity and Curiosity have landed, and they are trucking around Mars as we speak. We are learning so much about this place that we could be here for hours. But let's continue. Our next stop is Jupiter, but we're gonna have to fly through the asteroid belt to get there. Don't worry, I think I can get us there in one piece. But you might want to hold on, just in case. Welcome to the largest planet orbiting our sun. The sun is a star. That might sound obvious, but it was anything but to the earliest sky gazers. It is only with the tools that we have now that we are able to conclusively state that the giant ball of nuclear fire in our sky is the same kind of thing as every other point of light you see around you. Stars are essentially massive balls of gas that are constantly collapsing in on themselves. From this vantage point, the Milky Way is particularly beautiful. Feel free to look around and marvel. There is no rush. The sun is absolutely massive compared to the planets in our solar system. About one million Earths could fit inside it. But the sun is nowhere near the size of some stars. Let me shrink things a little more to prepare for the next bit. Bear with me. There. Everything should now be 50 times smaller than before. This will make sense soon, trust me. Let's do a little comparing, shall we? This is the star, Pollux. I'm gonna quiet down for a bit so you can take it all in. Pollux is a star in the constellation Gemini. I've drawn a circle around where it appears in the night sky. Look up and to the left to see it. Pollux is what's known as a red giant. 
that means it is further along in its stellar life cycle than our sun is. But rest assured, the sun will get there in time. Pollux is a little under 34 light years from Earth, which just means it takes light about 34 years to get from here to there. Now that doesn't sound like too long a time, but consider that light travels over 186,000 miles every second, and you can start to imagine how far away Pollux must be. Pollux is large, don't get me wrong, but there are things even more massive out there. supergiant Rigel. Rigel is the brightest star in the constellation Orion. Look directly to your left to see where it is in the night sky. It's about 860 light years away, give or take a few dozen light years. Rigel's color comes from its extreme temperature. On its surface, it can reach 12,000 Kelvin, and it is getting hotter every day. Rigel, like other blue-white supergiants, has already burned through the hydrogen in its core and is expanding on its way to a fiery end in the supernova. Rigel is enormous and so powerful it boggles the mind, but it's nothing compared to what's next. This V.Y. Canis Majoris. It's not normally visible to the naked eye, but I'll circle where it's located anyway. Look to the left of Rigel. This star is so huge, its gravity is crushing its core in an unsustainable way. Hypergiants like this don't last long. It's estimated that Canis Majoris will explode violently and collapse into a black hole within 100,000 years. Maybe it already has, and the light just hasn't reached us yet. Sometimes we reach a point where words are inadequate. I, I think this is one of those times. We need to take care of this tiny little blue-green rock. We need to take care of each other. To paraphrase the late Dr. Sagan, it sure seems that no one is headed our way from far away to save us from ourselves.
I've shown you the solar system, and I've shown you the sizes of stars as compared to our sun. Now let me show you everything to scale. No more toy models. It's about to get real. as far from the sun as our home planet really orbits. But what about the other planets? How far away are they? This is our entire solar system to scale, with the sun at the center. I hope you're beginning to get a sense of the immense amount of space there is between each planet. But what would happen if, say, Pollux replaced our sun? If Pollux replaced our sun, the planets would be flung wildly out of their orbits and life on Earth would be incinerated. But from our perspective way up here, not much seems to have changed. What about Rigel? If Rigel were at the center, it would engulf Mercury, and its immense gravity would start to draw all the planets towards it. It would be even worse news for our solar system. Look, I know what you're thinking, but it's a bad idea. Putting Canis Majoris at the center might have... unforeseen consequences. I... All right. Just this once. V.Y. Canis Majoris. It's not normally visible to the naked eye, but I'll circle where it's located anyway. Look to the left of Rigel. This star is so huge, its gravity is crushing its core.